"'Twas the night before Christmas, and all through the house, everyone was watching a ridiculous holiday film on Netflix." An English medieval Knigget is magically transported to modern-day times, where he encounters a young woman who has kind of lost her faith in love. To return to his own time, he must complete a quest, albeit a vague one, to prove that he is worthy of being a Knigget. The Night Before Christmas stars Vanessa Hudgens, Josh Whitehouse, and Emmanuel Treaky. It's a romantic holiday comedy that's not really romantic or comedic. The jokes in this are stale. I mean, every bit of this film we have seen before. And then even that, none of it feels fresh or new or even unique. I mean, every bit of it is just a rehash of something else we've seen. Now, I know that it's sometimes in romantic comedies, they reuse stories or they make very simple stories. And sometimes that's not a bad thing where you can make it feel fresh or new in a, new, in a different way. This one, though, is literally just rehashing every play in the book and saying, hey, it's a holiday movie you should watch. Josh Whitehouse is the knight, and he is Sir Cole, but most of the time they say it so fast that it sounds like Circle. And so that's what we called him throughout the movie, <laughs> and even afterwards as we're discussing him. Circle. Wait, what's his name? Circle. Cir Circle? Circle. Now, Circle is your typical fish out of water. I mean, he's been transported from the medieval times 700-something years into the future to present day. And, of course, he's going to encounter all kinds of weird things that he's never seen. And the filmmakers had some really good opportunities to use this, especially taking advantage of our modern-day technology. I mean, think about Bluetooth where you're just, you know, I see people in the grocery store all the time that look like they're nuts because they're just talking to themselves because their hair is covering their Bluetooth receiver. And then, well, okay, so he could have, you know, they could have had fun with that. Or what about a demon-possessed floor monster that goes searching for its next prey? It just randomly scoots around the floor, unmanned by any seen force, until it grabs something and it just keeps bouncing back and forth. Or what about remote starts on cars? I mean, well, cars, for even that matter, the dude isn't even really impressed when he first sees them. It just, everything is not taken advantage of to the best of its ability. They must have had a deal with Amazon also, which is kind of weird being a Netflix thing, and Amazon Prime is kind of a, you know, kind of a conflict, or at least a competitor in this streaming market. But they use Amazon Alexa. And they could have even had a lot of fun with that, but they didn't do it to nearly as much, and the jokes that they used with that, eh, they weren't really funny. And the romance in this romantic comedy isn't even that engrossing, which seems like it should be kind of the main focus if you're gonna call it a romantic comedy. I mean, even if it is a holiday romantic comedy, the, the emphasis is on the romance, and it was just kind of barely there. You get the sense that Vanessa Hudgens is pining after somebody else, but then also kind of falling for the night. And he, while maybe falling for her, is also trying to get back to his own time. So, you know, I guess there's a little bit of conflict there, but it's not really expressed well. Now, despite all of this and everything that I just didn't like about the film, there was one moment that got me. I mean, it actually choked me up a little bit. And I don't know if that's because I'm a sap or maybe just because I'm a dad, but there is a scene where a single dad is given a gift by the entire town. He's struggling and it was just touching. And at that moment, the emotion seemed real. It felt real. It felt good. And for the one time in this film, it was like, ooh, I appreciate this moment. So this is definitely a cheese ball movie that should be background. I mean, but even if that, there's many better things on Netflix, even holiday themed on Netflix, that you can be watching. Oh, one other thing that was kind of weird, kind of odd, uh, could have been used, I guess, well, but as they're watching TV, there is a Netflix holiday film playing in this Netflix holiday film. It's the Africa one with Rob Lowe that is currently playing on Netflix right now. It just released several weeks ago from the date of this recording. So it was just... it. They didn't use it, I guess, as tongue-in-cheek as they could have. Maybe it was just an advertisement, but it wasn't even blatant enough about that because it didn't have the Netflix logo in there anywhere, so you couldn't really tell that they were watching a Netflix film. 
If you have kids, I think they'll probably get a kick out of this because you have a guy swinging a sword around and he fights lawn ornaments. So there you go. And there's not really anything for you to worry about them watching as they're seeing this because there's there's no violence, there's no sex, there's no nudity. I don't even think there's really any profanity in this. But if you have to sit through the film with them, you have been warmed. I give The Night Before Christmas one and a half out of five couches. So what is the worst holiday film you've ever seen? Let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this review, please give it a like. Also, don't forget to share and subscribe. I'm Chris. This is Movies and Munchies. Thanks for couching with me.